the Motorola Ready4 desktop integration feature. It's an alternative to Samsung DeX and allows users to interact with their phone through their desktop setup wired or wirelessly. This video is a part one of a multi-part series covering the various modes of Ready4. Here we will cover the desktop mode. First we need to install the app on your Windows desktop. Get the Windows Ready4 app at the Microsoft App Store. Link is in the description. Next, make sure that Ready4 is installed on your Motorola phone. If it's supported, it should already be installed, but just make sure it's there and updated to the latest version. Check the Google Play Store. I'll leave the link in the description. Once the desktop app is installed, let's go through the options. There are a few settings here, such as the option to copy and paste certain content between your phone and your desktop. Even though you enable it on the desktop side, you'll have to enable it on the phone side for it to work. We'll get into that later. Then there's the desktop storage location of your drag and drop or remotely sent files using the Ready4 file transfer. This option enables the use of shortcut keys within a Ready4 window. There are a list of preset keys and you can't change them, but you can enable or disable the use of them. Further down you can see that you could rename your PC so it's easier to remember when you search for items to connect to. There are two settings here for how you want the Ready4 app to behave, such as starting up when your computer boots up and also the option to have it be visible to be searched by other devices, whether locked or not. And lastly, there's the update checker. On the phone side, you have similar settings. The name of your phone, where to save, drag and drop or share via Ready4 files, Bluetooth settings such as when your phone should be visible or if you want Ready4 to automatically turn on Wi-Fi or Bluetooth as needed. And lastly, if you want to accept the transfer from other Ready4 devices that haven't been paired. The notifications setting sets up which apps can send notifications to your paired Ready4 desktop device. The smart clipboard function enables sharing of certain copy and paste objects between Ready4 devices. Keep in mind both devices need to have this toggle on to work. And lastly, the video stream codec to stream with. This is the format Ready4 will use to stream the image of your phone to your desktop. You can toggle between H.265 or H.264 if one happens to crash your video driver or causes a lot of video distortion. Now let's pair up the devices. You can pair it up and connect wirelessly or wired, but wireless mode needs your desktop to be on the same Wi-Fi network as your phone and Bluetooth activated on both devices. You can link your phone by simply scanning the generated QR code from the Ready4 app. If you are not on the same Wi-Fi network, for example if you're traveling, you can link up using a USB cable. You only have to do this once, as once it's linked, it can connect easily. For example, I get home and both the desktop and phone are on the same Wi-Fi. They can already see each other and it will show that they are available to connect. All you have to do is activate the feature you want. Or use the cable if you're not on Wi-Fi. Now let's check out the mobile desktop. This lets you run a Windows desktop version of your phone on your computer. Although it shows menu selections for resolution and a choice of landscape or portrait, they're not selectable for some reason. You can resize the window once the session starts or maximize the window for full screen mode. And once the session is started, you can go into the desktop settings and change the different resolution than what you started with. Full screen mode only works if you choose the native resolution of your monitor. Otherwise, even maximize, it's still in a windowed mode. In windowed mode, your mouse can go in and out between native Windows apps and your windowed ready for session seamlessly. If your monitor is big enough, the windowed session works well but otherwise I like to use it in full screen mode. 
The layout of desktop mode is similar to your Windows desktop. You get an All Apps button on the bottom left corner just like a Windows Start button. You also get a list of pinned apps with a white dot to signify it's currently active. Non-pinned apps that are currently running shows up to the right of those. To the right of the lower taskbar is your phone to desktop connection status. There's also tools like locking the phone, a screenshot shortcut, ready for desktop settings shortcut, the Wi-Fi status of your phone, and volume of the phone audio stream. You can also choose where you want the sound to come from with this shortcut, whether from the phone itself or the audio being streamed to your desktop speakers or whatever is the output on your desktop at the moment. The last segment has your phone battery level, the time and date, and phone notifications. For the running apps windows, you can resize the window, but each app will react differently. Some images get stretched out so everything looks wider than it should be, while others scale appropriately. Every app gets a top bar that lets you restart the app, snap the window to the left or right side, and resize it to half the width of the desktop. You can minimize the app or run in full screen within the Ready For desktop. In full screen mode, getting back to the desktop is not that intuitive. You actually have to hover your mouse on the top until the bar shows up and it will allow you to manipulate it back to windowed mode. And if you happen to have the Ready For desktop running in your monitor's native resolution, the Ready For apps top toolbar overlaps the left side snapped apps toolbar. So getting to it quickly is a bit tricky because you have to manipulate around the full screen toolbar toolbar overlay. Running apps inside a Ready for Desktop is a mixed experience. Keep in mind if you change the settings of the app to make it more usable here, it may not be what you would like when you start it on your phone as the settings do stick even after the Ready for session has ended. For example, using my gallery app. On the phone, I like to have thumbnails of two columns, but starting the app inside Ready for, having only two columns seem very inefficient, especially in full screen mode or snap to the side. If I were to change the settings in the app to allow more columns, that carries back to the phone and it becomes too small on the phone's portrait oriented screen. As for web browsing, let's compare a Chrome session with a real Windows Chrome session. Because this is, the mobile version of Chrome, it defaults to loading mobile versions of the sites, which do not look very good on the big screen. Everything is just zoomed in. So you would need to switch it to a desktop site. Now keep in mind, this setting stays with you when you disconnect Ready4. So when you open Chrome again on your phone, you'll have to disable the loading of the desktop site. If I were to use this on a regular basis, I would probably have to download another browser and set it to desktop mode so that I don't have to constantly switch back and forth in the settings. But the browsing experience is fine and it feels just like I'm using a regular Windows browser. Streaming audio is seamless and easy to switch between audio out from your phone or have it stream to your Windows desktop sound output by using the volume icon on the bottom right corner. The child who stole the watch was afraid that he would get caught. But there was absolutely nothing he could do at that moment. When it was his turn for the search, with his eyes closed, he thought that the teacher had reached her hand into his pocket and found the watch. Indeed, a few moments later, after the teacher had... As for the number of apps you can open at the same time, obviously this depends on which app it is, but I was able to get over 10 apps open simultaneously before it started shutting down apps on its own. You can see the active ones on the taskbar on the bottom. One thing to note is that if you try to open the same app on the phone that's already been opened on the Ready4 desktop, it will close the remote one and open it on the phone. And the same thing will happen in reverse. So basically, whoever requests the app will close the remote app and open it on the side that requested it. I find this mode to be useful while traveling with a cheap laptop and having my phone connected to it with a USB cord. I could have my personal information stored on my phone and not on an expensive laptop that is at risk of being stolen or lost. 
the processing would be mostly from the phone while the cheap laptop would act sort of like a dump terminal. Unless you do not have a decent desktop setup at home or you must do work off your phone's apps using a larger screen and mouse, I didn't find myself wanting or needing to launch desktop mode often. What I found myself using the most was the app streaming feature. More on this on the next part. Pursue to look for the answer. As a result, 1 plus 1 has never been solved before. Would that imply the sum of 1 plus 1 does not exist? No, of course not. The answer of 1 plus 1 would always exist, no matter if you choose to seek it or not. This is no-